Hello class, I have decided to make this video for you so that you can go back and watch it later. There's a lot of information going on and there's a lot of benefit to being able to pause this and rewind it. So it's about me and Bill O'Brien getting stuck on an island. And the only activity that we can really do is catch fish or pick apples. And we're going to start off with the assumption that we like to have a balanced diet, a little bit of variety. So we're each going to spend half of our time fishing and half of our time picking apples. But I have these numbers on the bottom of the slide here that say if I only pick apples, I can pick 50 in a day. And if I only go fishing, I can catch 50 fish in a day. And you can see the corresponding numbers for Bill. So let's go and draw a PPF for each of us. Okay, so here I am. I can pick 50 apples in a day if I don't catch any fish. That's at this point right here. Next, I could catch 50 fish if I did not pick any apples. So if we combine these right here, we get my PPF. Okay, now Bill, he could pick 200 apples in a day if he doesn't catch any fish. Or he could catch 100 fish if he doesn't pick any apples. So let's pretend that that connects. And this is for O'Brien. Now, I said that we would spend half of our day doing each activity. So if I spend half my day fishing, I'm going to catch 25 fish and that comes up here. I'll be at this point on my PPF. I spend the rest of my day picking apples. I'm here at 25 apples. Now Bill, he is going to spend half his day fishing. He catches 50 fish and that's going to correspond to 100 apples. Okay, so in half his day he can pick 100 apples. Now let's talk about our opportunity costs. All right, so opportunity cost. So for me, if I want to catch one more fish, you can see that I have to give up picking one apple, right? And that's basically because we can look at the opportunity cost of moving between this point and this point, or we could even go between the middle point and this point or the middle point and this point. Either way you cut it, if I want one more fish, I have to give up an apple. Okay, so if I catch one fish, I have to give up one apple. All right, now likewise, if I pick one apple, I'm just going to abbreviate that A, I have to give up one fish. So hopefully you can see why that happens. Now Bill, on the other hand, what happens to him? If he wants to catch one fish, he has to actually give up two apples. So we could see that either moving between this point and uh, either end, or we could compare both of these intercepts. But basically, if he, you can think that if he wants to catch 100 fish, he has to give up 200 apples. So if we were to move from this point to this point, then he would have to give up 200 apples to get 100 fish. So for every fish he catches, he's giving up two apples. And if he wants to pick one apple, he has to give up one half of a fish. Okay, so now what do we notice? Let's compare our opportunity costs. So for fishing, it turns out that I have to give up one apple and Bill has to give up two apples. So I have the lowest opportunity cost. All right. Now, for apples, I have to give up one fish for every apple 
but O'Brien only has to give up half of a fish for every apple because his one half of a fish is a lower opportunity cost for apples than my one fish, O'Brien has the opportunity, the lowest opportunity cost. And what we're going to say is that the lowest opportunity cost means you have the comparative advantage. Okay, so low opportunity cost means comparative advantage. So now let's look at a tabular representation of this information. So if each of us are just doing our own thing, we're spending half the day fishing and half the day picking apples, you can look in this column and I can catch 25 fish or I can pick 25 apples, I'm sorry, and I can pick 25 apples in a day and O'Brien's doing 50 and 100. So these are just the points that we had on the PPF where we were producing. So how can we do better than that? Well, Bill's a bit smarter than I am and he wants to trade. He says he'll trade me 37 apples for 25 fish. Now, I know if we go back up to this slide, I have the comparative advantage in fishing. I have the lowest opportunity cost of fishing. If we're going to specialize, I should specialize in fishing. So I'm going to fish all day long. Okay, so that's where these numbers come from now. I am spending all day fishing. So I am not getting any apples, no apples. Now, O'Brien, he is going to specialize as well. He's going to spend three quarters of his day picking apples. So in a full day, he could pick 200. Three quarters of that is 150. And his remaining time, one quarter of the day, he's going to fish. Well, in a full day, he can catch 100 fish. So with only one quarter of the day, he can catch 25 fish. So now these are our production numbers. So you can see our total number of fish, if we do a total over here, excuse me, total, we find that now we have 75 total fish and 150 apples. Okay, if we go back a slide, then you find that we had 75 total fish and 125 apples. So it turns out that we've kept the same number of fish, but now we're making more apples. All right, let's move on. So this trade, 25 fish for 37 apples, the numbers could be a bit different and we could still have trade. But what's happened was previously, I had caught 50 fish. Okay, so I caught 50 I trade 25 to O'Brien. Okay, now O'Brien, he had caught 25 fish and then I gave him 25 in the trade. So he's back to 50, which was where it was when he was spending his time half the day fishing, half the time on apples. Now here's where the magic happens. With the apples, I didn't pick any apples. All right, I got all of these from the trade. Okay, so Bill gave me 37 apples in exchange for my 25 fish. Now, recall over here that he had picked 150 apples, but we have to take away the 37 he gave me, and he's left with. 113 apples, okay? But that is more than he had. When he spent half the day picking apples, he only could pick 100 apples. So now you see that there's an extra 25 apples even though we still have the same number of fish beforehand. So we can both consume more than we could produce. That deserves an exclamation point. All right, so both of us are consuming more than we could produce, and that is really super cool. That is the advantage of trade, and if I set these numbers up a little bit different, we could end up with both more fish 
and more apples. I just did these numbers like this so that the math worked out easy and you can follow along. But if you want to see an example where we have more of both things, come talk to me in my office hours. Okay? So here this slide explains why this trade worked out this way and you might want to rewind this video and watch it again and again. Thanks for watching.